The more affordable RTX 50 series GPU has arrived in the shape of the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti, which is also using the latest Blackwell architecture. It's a follow-up to the RTX 4060 Ti and also aimed at 1080p gaming for the highest frame rate possible. But we can still go 1440p by tweaking the settings a little bit, which we will of course talk about later. Since there is no Founders Edition from NVIDIA for the 5060 Ti, we are doing the review for the MSI RTX 5060 Ti 16G Ventus 2X Plus instead. Surprisingly, yeah, it does have 16 gigs of VRAM. This card carries a familiar aesthetic from the Ventus series that has a two-fan design and also compact enough to fit in most ATX and MATX builds. This is a very practical design. This card is also rated for a TDP of up to 180 watts and also uses only a single 8-pin PCIe power connector only. For our test bench, we are using this list of specs as shown on the screen here. Honestly speaking though, there is no reason to use such hardware with the RTX 5060 Ti but then again, this just means that for our setup in particular, there will be no bottlenecks for this RTX 5060 Ti. Okay, let's jump straight into the performance tests and starting with the raster performance. At 1080p, the RTX 5060 Ti really shines bright. It can chew through everything that we throw at it and spews out high frame rate with high graphical settings. For certain titles, it performs so much more better than the RTX 4060 Ti. When we turn it up to 1440p though, it handled well enough to be at or cross the 60fps mark for most games except for heavier titles like Anon Wake 2. Still, this is rather impressive. At 4K though, this is to be expected. It struggles. If we indeed want to play games at 4K with the RTX 5060 Ti though, then we'll have to turn down the graphical settings by quite a lot. Now, for the ray tracing performance, most mid-range cards like this will have a problem with ray tracing and this is where the RTX 5060 Ti starts to show its limits also, but depending on the resolution. For 1080p, it can handle most titles that we've tested with it and we'll just recommend you to turn on ray tracing anyway because yeah, it can just handle it without any issues. For whatever reason though, Hogwarts Legacy is dipping below our expectations and that is the only one game that is kind of problematic here. Turning it up to 1440p will reveal that the performance is better though not the best and it still needs some helping hand. Either by lowering the ray tracing settings or enabling frame generation will definitely be the helping hand that it needs. Going up to 4K with ray tracing enabled though, uh, yeah, the performance kind of tanks. It is to be expected since this card isn't doing that well for 4K raster performance anyway, and now with 4K ray tracing, uh, yeah, the performance is gonna be tanking even harder. Especially for heavier titles like Hogwarts Legacy, Animal Wake 2, and Cyberpunk 2077. Even with DLSS turned on, there will be a lot of starters and they are noticeable, yet distracting. But the question comes, how does the new DLSS 4 elevate the frame rate pushed out by this card? Well, as a quick recap, the new RTX 50 series cards with the Blackwell architecture can use DLSS 4 and with it comes a new feature called multi-frame generation and that might help the RTX 5060 Ti achieve even higher frame rates, right? Uh, kind of? At 4K with 4 times the frame multiplier, yes, you can get good frame rates but at the cost of noticeable latency and frame time. The added input delay makes the experience feel off and uh, you get smooth frame rates in numbers but not in feel. At 1440p, this makes a lot more sense. Frame gen helps to keep things smooth and fluid without too much added latency. Artifacts will definitely appear during fast camera movement but that's only a concern for fast paced shooters. For most titles though, it's a worthwhile trade-off since the artifacts only show up for a split second. It's not noticeable if you are not looking at that particular location and pinpointing what's happening. 
In productivity workloads like video editing and rendering, the RTX 5060 Ti peaks at around 200 watts, while gaming draws about 170 watts. Pretty reasonable for its performance class. The temperature though, for this car in particular with two fans, it can hit a maximum of 78.4 degrees Celsius in synthetic stress tests, while the memory junction temperature is at 72 degrees Celsius. In real-world gaming, it averages at around 75.6 for the core, and uh, memory junction is at 71 degrees Celsius. Uh, not too bad for a dual fan cooler like this that is also supremely lightweight. That means the heatsink is quite small. <laughs> so, the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigs offers a solid upgrade over its predecessor, especially for both 1080p and 1440p gaming. While it struggles a bit in ray tracing heavy titles without frame generation, but a quick tweak to the ray tracing settings will still make this card deliver impressive visuals with smooth experience, a more balanced experience more like. It's a great upgrade path even for those who are using the RTX 4060 Ti, especially if you are looking for more VRAM. With newer titles that demand even more memory, the 16GB variant is a smarter choice moving forward. Though, usually games will only use more VRAM if we turn up the graphical settings and resolution, and uh, that is where the RTX 5060 Ti might struggle. That means the extra VRAM on this card seems to be maybe unutilized for games, but uh, if you are doing AI on this card though, then that 16 gigs of VRAM will be very useful. There is another variant of this card with 8 gigs of VRAM, but I do think 8 gigs is a bit lacking. Having 12 gigs of VRAM though would be perfect for this card. At the starting price of 429 US dollars, it does undercut the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigs launch price making it a reasonable deal. So if you're shopping for a new GPU that nails 1080p and still holds up at 1440p resolutions, then this RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigs might be a card for you. Yeah, so do let us know what do you think about this card in particular down in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.